Hey, this is Elia Mother from Dark Funeral and Gra, and you're watching Richard Metal Fan. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Richard Metal Fan Interviews. This is episode number 76. And today's guest, I am talking with Hello Mother. He is the lead vocalist for the band Dark Funeral, and he has another band called Gra. Today we're going to be talking to him about his journey as a musician before he started to now, as well as like joining Dark Funeral, playing in other bands, songwriting, lyrics, and etc. So, without further ado, let's go talk to Helen Martyr. So, what's up, guys? I am here with uh, Helen Martyr from Dark Funeral, Roll, uh, Gra, uh, and probably a couple other bands. So, how are you doing today, man? I'm fine. It's an early morning. I just came back from uh, finishing the last summer festivals here in Europe. So, uh, yeah, I need a lot of coffee. Yeah, it's like four in the morning here in Georgia and the U.S., so I'm right with you on the early morning stuff. <laughs> yeah, I hear, you. I hear you. Yeah, so basically this format is I want to do a rundown of your catalog as well as talk about like your journey as a musician from where you started to now, but I want to dive right back into the very beginnings. Like, What were like the first bands that got you into metal and made you want to be a vocalist? I think the very first one was ACDC. Uh, my uncle had a, had a Dirty Deeds album, I remember. And uh, he was 10 years older than me, and I thought it was kind of cool. Uh, so I liked hanging with him. We lived in the same uh, same town. Uh, yeah, and, and uh, yeah, I think that was like a very important album. And then later on, when 1990 came, I think I was like seven or something, he gave me the Race of Sedge album on cassette. And I, I played that tape to pieces, you know? Yeah. So I think that is uh, that's my like the early, early, <laughs> early bird shit. And then, of course, later on, uh, Extreme Metal came along, but ACDC, it's, it's, that album has a special place in my heart, I think, especially the um, Race of Sage album. Yeah, and what were you, like, like bands before, like, obviously people know you from Dark Funeral, Funeral and, and Graw, but what were, like, the bands before that? Because I saw on Metal Archives, I believe it was uh, Diabolical Lust, or Diabolic Lust was your first band. I'm, I'm always curious, because I don't think anybody's really talked about that. No, I, no well, there isn't so much to listen to either from those days. I mean, we we did we were kids without money, up, living up in the north of Sweden, like actually above the Arctic Circle, in a small fucking town. So uh, we were trying to do our best, and yeah, I had the Diabolic Lust from, uh, yeah, I think we started in '97 or something like that. And me and the and a, and a friend, we had another band from '95 called uh, Symphony of Malice. Oh. We we have some recordings, but we never really released it. So uh, I mean, it's no wonder nobody heard it. It's been like this. Yeah, I would love more uh, stuff. Well, maybe that's something for YouTube in the future. I don't know. Yeah, I'd love to hear that to see what see what that's all about because I can't. I've tried looking up up something for this interview, and I can't find anything. Well, you can actually find them on uh, my YouTube channel. I have I have uploaded two Diabolic Last songs. Uh, oh, wow. One is from 2001, I think, and another one from 2003. So, yeah, check it out there. You have two songs, and they are that's definitive. All right. And then moving on, I believe the first, the next band is uh, Curse 666, which would later be Curse 13. I know you did, like, like two demos from 04. Before. Tell me about those. Yeah, <clears throat> that's that's also something. When I had Diabolic Lust, I was still like extremely active, trying to get become like learn my trade, you know. So I, I started Curse Six 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 actually in '98, uh, also along, and that was like my my solo shit that I was trying to also get into this uh, world of uh, home recordings because I realized I would never be <laughs> wealthy enough to afford proper studios. So I started playing with that shit. Uh, it eventually culminated in a couple of demos in the early 2000s and later on it became an album but now it's been like this uh, thing going on in the background a lot so we never really it was very hard to get something out uh, when, especially when you come from the north and you don't have a, any networking skills at all and uh, the internet was young and ripe yeah yeah, and I noticed also. So there, for, from from the metal archives, you had once once a one song demo from two thousand one, which was unreleased. I was wondering if there that that will ever see the light of day. I have shit tons of old recordings, <clears throat> actually. Oh, wow. And uh, I mean, some of the stuff we have uh, re-recorded in one way or another with Gra. Uh, for example, the a song from the first uh, first Gra album. Uh, 
called Offerrök. Uh, that is actually riffs from 98 or 99 that I found on an old cassette that I was listening to. I was like, hey, this is kind of cool. I can do something with it. And also uh, my, my solo song, uh, Transcending Into a God, that is also raised from that same tape. I mean, it's based on that. Oh, wow. So it's been a, a song that's been in, in writing, I think, 20 years it took to, to finish it. You know, those riffs that just float along, it's, it's good, but it's, it never fits into a concept. And then eventually it will find a place. And actually, even on the new the upcoming album, there is one song that is an old <laughs> song from 2003, I think. So, uh, I don't know, those recordings are so fucking primitive, it doesn't really sound good. Oh. Uh, but it's, I think it's more fun to use the material later on and, and incorporate it in, uh, in today's recordings because it, it gives also like a thread to the past in a way. Okay, fair enough. So then I think Curse 666 then became Curse 13 and then I know you did like a the thing called I Love Cyanide, which was released in June of 06. I've also heard it was like recorded in 03. I was wondering why it, why it took like three years to be released. Well, I think nobody, I, I didn't, didn't search for a label. And then someone contacted me and I said, yeah, sure, I have this. Uh, awesome. it was, I think it's simple as that. So, and I love it. Just simple, just raw black metal. I love it. Ah, it's very primitive, yeah. Yeah, and then, then of course, I know like, like you did modern modernized messiah Messiah, which is a very quick turnaround did you like started like writing that immediately after i love cyanide yeah i think so <clears throat> there was like a turning point in my in my life when a, when a friend of mine uh, came to my my place and he was like hey dude can i do something with your guitar and he uh changed the strings <laughs> uh, and tuned it down to b from e and i was like oh shit yeah okay i can do this i can dig it and uh, then that kind of changed the way I was writing music in that that point, it became a lot heavier. All right, and then I think it, think also, and you started up Graw. How did Graw form? Uh, well, I had Curse Thirteen, and uh, we did actually a split CD with the uh, Gothenburg band uh, Dungur back in two thousand and was it nine? I think. Uh, and then we came into this writer's block, me, and because I had recruited Dimman uh, as the drummer for Curse 13, and we were do, uh, trying to make the first album happen. We had a label and everything was like ready, but I got into this writer's block and I, I just couldn't make up my mind with how, where to go with the album. So uh, actually me and Dimman, it was in, this was in 2010, we uh, went and bought a couple of boxes of beer, went into our rehearsal room, uh, and I brought whatever equipment I had at the time, myself, microphones and shit. And uh, a couple of days later, we came out with uh, the completed uh, Hail Fad EP, four songs, or written, recorded, everything. Uh, and we didn't know what the fuck to do with that because it didn't sound like Curse 13 at all, you know? Yeah. The, the, it had like this reminiscence of more old school, more raw shit. Uh, so we decided it needs an own, its, its own identity in a way, and uh, we just, just for fun, send out a couple of songs to some some labels and a Greek guy uh, caught interest. I wanted to release it, and that's that's how it happened. And then we started on that path. Yeah, uh, no. and eventually the writer's block for Curse Thirteen ended up, and we we could release the album in 2013, I think it was. Yeah, uh, but then it became like this schizophrenic. We, we, we were the same guys with two bands and I was like we have to we have to make a decision here so we we decided to go with Gra because we felt we felt more going in that direction basically it's, simple, it's as simple as that yeah and I'd love to help for for but I also saw metal archives that was dedicated to the spirit that existed in the 90s when black metal meant something I don't know if you can elaborate more on that oh I think it's kind of self explanatory in a way there was a different vibe in the 90s i think that kind of the, I kind of felt a lot of it had disappeared in the 2000s i don't know maybe it's a bit maybe that spirit is a bit back now because i don't know i don't know there, there, there weren't a gazillion bands per per person not everyone i don't know it's very hard to explain and that was something that we wrote 12 years ago also so probably it had deeper meaning back then yeah 
And then, then moving on, on to the self-titled title Grow album in 2011, 11, I, another quick turn, turnaround. I'm guessing, did you start writing for the self-titled right after Hellfart? Yeah, I mean, when we did the Hellfart EP and it was released, uh, we were starting to get interest for, for concerts. And we were like, what the fuck? We don't have a lineup for that. Uh, so we, <clears throat> we had to start recruiting guys, and that was weird. Uh, but we did find a couple of guys, and uh, by the time we had a con our first concert, we real realized we need to have more songs. Like, you know, we cannot just play four. So we, I think we did like a Bathory or a Venom uh, cover, and then we, uh, we added some, some songs that eventually ended up on the, on the debut album, because I had some, some things written. Uh, so yeah, it was kind of an immediate response, and the response was, uh, we were a bit surprised because it was very good. And, things started happening very quickly so we 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 caught the moment and yes we so we made that album yeah and then the necrology of the witch is up, up next and i love love that of that album. i also love how you did like a cover of mayhem's freezing moon what made you decide to like do cover that song in particular well we we were like we felt like we are in between albums now uh necrology of the witch is not an album it's an ep but and then, then we thought, well, let's do something different. Let's do a cover. And what, but what fucking cover are we doing? So we thought, okay, but let's do Freezing Moon. We've been jamming it as a warm up. It's, it's a song that we've been like, I mean, since, since I started making music, that's been like an easy enough song for a kid to play, basically. <laughs> so, so it's been like in the blood since, <laughs> since, uh, since we were young ourselves. But it kind of felt natural, and uh, with the vocals on that one, I tried to make, uh, it's like two uh, vocal tracks. One is going more in the dead direction, and the other one is going a bit more in the Attila direction to, like, pay yeah. tribute to both of them as uh, amazing singers. Yeah, and, that, and you sound fucking great, man. Thanks, man. Yeah, and then going back in the Curse 13, you released a, The Triumph that, that same year in 2013. And one of my favorite songs on that is the song uh, Sig Sigduff drifts, and it also kind of gives me a little bit of a stoner metal vibe. I'm guessing, do you like try to like like make sure every song has like a different kind of like moods and emotions and vibes? Yeah, I mean that album took twenty years to write, almost. I mean, so yeah, of course uh, you have you have music from all there. I'm not now, well, fifteen years is more right because I started some the oldest series from ninety eight. Yes, okay, so thirteen, fifteen years. Well, fifteen in the making so of course you have um, progress in how you write songs you know especially when you're young that's where that's where you have the biggest leap you know every year you have learned so many new things and gotten so many new in in sources of inspiration so of course it's going to be a, a wider gap there but yeah those that album became like a it's a good compilation of what i what i what i did with curse 13 from the from the beginning up up until then it's, yeah, but that is varied, but I like that too. Yeah. And of course, Seductress is as for, for me as a, a Black Sabbath tribute. Yeah, I love it. Love Sabbath. I mean, if it wasn't for Sabbath, we wouldn't wouldn't have metal. No, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But then 2014, of course, you, you ended up joining joining the, the legendary Dark Funeral. I was curious, how did they find find mm -hmm. you guys? Because I, 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 I interviewed Lord Armon a few months ago, and I think you were playing in another band, and I guess they were trying to find a new singer. And I just want to know from your perspective how they, they approached you. Uh, well, I mean, um, Dark Funa was in a, in a turmoil back then with lineup changes. There was a lot of things going on uh, that wasn't so, so awesome for the band. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of setbacks with that. Um, and they were doing this 20, 20 year anniversary show in uh, Stockholm uh, with Caligula proclaiming this is the last show I'm going to do. And they had a lot of guests. They had like the original singer, Tim Gorot, also coming up, uh, singing a couple of songs and the old guitarists, old drummers. It was like this, uh, a really, really cool show. Uh, so they wanted a local support act. And they heard good things about Gra. So uh, Arman contacted me and he was like, would you like to open for this show? Uh, we were like, of course. Cool. Uh, and then it turned out that me and Arma, we have been living in the same town up in the north, so we have some mutual friends, uh, which made conversation uh, way more, more fun. And uh, while doing the promotion for that show, uh, we were talking more and more, and 
but Caligula was leaving. And I, I thought to myself, well, that's a shame, you know? And I also asked myself, <laughs> dude, I'm, I'm not that bad, you know? Maybe I can do it. Uh, so I was thinking about it for a couple of weeks, actually. And then, uh, then I decided to uh, send a message to, uh, to Arman and, and uh, actually say, yeah, I am ready to try if you want to try me. Uh, because I think I can, I can do it long term. Uh, you know, with everything that comes with touring and uh, and all, all those things too. Uh, so, uh, and I remember Arma's response was well interesting because it's very different what you do with Gra. So that if you can do this and say, well, learn these three songs and uh, we'll go to rehearsal place and, and we'll just find out. And I did, and it turned out really great. So, so basically, straight after that show. Uh, we started working on what became Nailing Up the Cross. I mean, he had the riffs ready and I started writing the lyrics immediately. Yeah, and when, but, when you joined Dark Funeral, were you like looking at past albums like Secret of the Black Arts and Atira to distinct this and be like, okay, this is what I need to do? Or did like like Armand and the rest of the guys wanted you to like bring your own mix to Dark Funeral? No, I think I have, I wouldn't have been interested in joining if I couldn't bring me, bring me into Dark Funeral, you know? Yeah. If I'm supposed to be uh, like, like a, a, in a cover band kind of thing. I don't like that. Uh, that doesn't interest me at all. I mean, I am, I'm not just a singer. I'm also a composer. I like to create stuff. Uh, and of course I have to do it my way because in the long run, I'm the one singing the, these songs. Uh, so uh, the first lyrics that I, I, I wrote for Dark Funeral was uh, the lyrics for Nail to the Cross. And for me, that was like, uh, okay, I'm, I want to capture what I think is the essence of Dark Funeral. What, it, what the essence of Dark Funeral is to me. Uh, I mean, I started listening to the band when, before they even had released the Secrets album. You know, as the, the EP was out and they were on a lot of compilation albums and shit. Uh, so I wanted to capture that, that feeling that I had the first time I, I heard Dark Funeral, you know, and, and what, what, what it had been up until that point. So yeah, that, that's, that, that was my approach for that. And that has been my approach since, I mean, I do my own thing now. I, it's, I cannot compare. Of course, of course there is a, like a legacy to, to stick to. Of course, obviously, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna start singing in Swedish, you know? Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not, not gonna touch subjects that doesn't fit into the, the world of the funeral because, I mean, that's, that's normal. I do the same for Gra. I, I don't do weird stuff that doesn't fit the concept, you know? Yeah, yeah, totally. And so, 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 were you like nervous, like being the new singer? Because usually, when bands ch change singers, it's always like a big th thing. Did you feel like pre like pressure to be the new guy in the band? No, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, this is a question I've been getting a lot of times, and it's like some 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 guys are like, "Ah, you had such big shoes to fill." I mean, yeah, I'm a short guy, and Caligula is a tall guy, but I have my own shoes. You know, I'm not trying to fill anyone else's shoes. I, I cannot do that. And like I said before, if I if I wanted to be in a cover band, I would be in a cover band. But Dark Funeral is an active band that is still progressing and it's uh, moving forward, which is something that I really, really appreciate and, and uh, enjoy about it. Because just just going in as a as a silent member and doing repeating someone else's uh, creativity now is, doesn't interest me so much. All right, and then of course going back to Grau, Grau, you released "Ending" near the end of, of twenty fifteen. Well, how, tell me about that whole recording process for that. <coughs> yeah, the ending album. Uh, when we, when we, uh, we had like this little concept going on that has been kind of lost in time. I think uh, when we finished the uh, Helfa DP and then we finished uh, the first album, we saw that we had this kind of a concept around death from from the thought about death until the fear of death and the actual dying and the ritual surrounding death like burials uh well grief and everything and also the transition to the other side uh we've been, we've been using a lot of greek mythology for that uh, mixed mixed with scandinavian uh so we call that like the the hilfad era or the Aaron era sometimes um, an ending is the end of that. So from hail fed up to ending, you have you have like a very hard, hard understood concept that we recreated for ourselves. So ending was supposed to be like the ending of that. And 
I think that album kind of sums it up pretty well because we did move along after it, and it it, it kind of belongs to that this that first era. Yeah, yeah, and then also going to 2016, you released the date your first album with Dark Funeral, where Shadows Forever Rain, and I definitely yeah. loved that. That was one of my favorite albums of 2016. What was that like, like like being your first record with the band? Yeah, I mean the the reviews were were awesome, and they was very well received. Uh, so, so yeah, of course, was, that, that album um, meant a lot to me. Of course, it's a, it's a milestone, milestone in my career, and we started touring a lot, which is fantastic. Heck yeah, and I remember first hearing this "Unchain My Soul," and I was like, "Yeah, this is awesome." And that was ironically my my introduction to Dark Funeral, and then of course later discovered all the old older stuff. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, and I remember first seeing you all all in 2018 in Atlanta, where you did that tour with Septic Flesh. I believe was that like your first time touring in America? Yeah, for me it was. Yeah, awesome. Well, so, what was that whole experience like? Like visiting America. I mean, it was uh, it was really cool. I mean, I've been doing a lot of tours in Europe and been been in a lot of places, but I don't know. It's, it's it was it was a cool experience to get into the US for the first time. Uh, I, I really liked it a lot. It's a very diverse country, you know. It's one city is not the, like the next, you know. Uh, and you have all the all the climates and uh, you know all the all the types of people. Ah, it's kind of cool. I like it, and I'm looking forward to going back now in uh, in November. Yeah, yeah. Of course, I've got my ticket for the show show in Athens. It's gonna be great. Ah, cool. Yeah, but then moving on to your, is the final album with Curse Thirteen that same year into Ashes. Just tell me about that, and what I was curious what what made you all decide to call it quits after that. Well, that was uh, that was an EP, a, a two song, uh, seven inch single that we did. And yeah, I did it. well, I assume you heard it. It's a bit uh, out there, music-wise. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a lot of jazz things going on. And uh, I don't know, we, we just felt those songs are also... It's, my timeline is very weird. I have to like say that. My timeline is very weird. Sometimes I can pull out a song that is six or eight years old, and it's like new and it's maybe it's more even more creative than the stuff i'm cur currently writing and and these songs have been like in the pipeline for a long time those riffs has, have been like floating around uh and actually we recorded the, the into ashes ep at the same time as we recorded the where shadows dwell which is an old uh, 2014 uh song. oh wow uh so we recorded that at the same time those three songs and but they were released separately and mixed separately. Uh, and, so Into Ashes is actually really recorded in 2014 uh, yeah. together with uh, Where Shadows Dwell, which is a grass song that, that we released uh, before the Dark Funeral release party thing. Uh, the, no, the, before the 20th anniversary show. So yeah, the timeline is really weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I noticed you also play with a lot of different bands. So is there like a like a sim, so like a like a different like game plan? plan or everything or or is there like a like a thing like a simple like method that applies to all the madness i don't know i don't know well i i, I try not to go into all, all the projects that is like offered to me i mean i i don't i don't do so much guest vocals anymore for example because i think i will i want to save my voice for for my own uh for my own music and i don't want it to be too watered out you know by being being everywhere uh, but i have started to do more and more mix and mastering jobs like studio jobs for that like my style of, of mixing so i've been doing a lot of those yeah and then going back into Graw, you released uh, vazen in 2018 tell me a little yeah. bit about that oh you're missing one release there also you're missing the um, ram svarta tankar ep oh oh yeah yeah i forgot about that uh, tell me about that too well, to get into Vasa, you need to you need you need to understand that one first, uh, because it was that's where we changed the logo. Oh, uh, and we changed the logo because we were done with this first period, as I explained to you before. This this first chapter was over, and we were like, we were actually thinking, should we like put this band to rest, to rest, or should we continue? Uh, but and we decided if if we are to continue, we need to do some radical. Change it. We need to. We need to be. It needs to be like Gra 2.0. You know, we have to do something. We cannot just keep grinding and abusing 
I'm using what we already finished. Uh, so we decided to change the logo. And if you <clears throat> listen to the Ram Svarta Tankaripi, you can hear also there's like a musical leap uh, again, which culminates in uh, into Vasan, which is also completely out there compared to ending, which is more way more minimalistic. Uh, and the, the cover art concept also changed a lot, as you can see, we're going in, in a different direction there too. All right. And then back to Dark Funeral, I know back in March released We Are the Apocalypse, which I think is a great album. Still one of my favorite albums to come out this year. You're, you're, did you feel like comfortable like, making the, this album compared to Where Shadows, or for, Where Shadows Forever Rain? Well, the thing is that we worked in the exact same way. Uh, I mean, my, I have my own home studio and uh, Arman has his own home studio. Uh, so during this the pandemic now, we've been, we've been sending uh, songs back and forth. He's been sending me some riff, riff ideas and I've been sending him, okay, but how about we do a vocal line like this over that? So we, we've been working like that to complete the album. And that is exactly the same way we did with, with uh, uh, Wish Out Forever Rain too. So it's kind of, it's kind of natural, a natural way for us to work. And, uh, you know, we have the occasional phone call, but usually he's a morning guy and I'm an evening guy. Yeah. So when my evening comes, I have I have stuff from him, and I send it. And when he wakes up in the morning, he has fresh fresh things from me. So we've been working like that now. Oh wow! That's and with cool. this uh, fucking pan pandemic too, it's been uh, <laughs> I mean, we had we had the time to actually focus completely on this, and not being interrupted by touring and stuff. So we we were actually able to maybe put even more effort into uh, where the apocalypse than we than we had with the uh, shadows because that was more on a tight tighter uh, schedule. Right, right. Is it like easier to like just come up with like ideas like like in, in isolation rather than than just with with your bandmates, or do you need to like hear music in order to come up with the lyrics? Uh, it, it's completely different. I mean, some some lyrics I've been writing in a bus. You know, I just get an idea, write it down, and there's a complete there's a complete song there. It just it just poof comes. And other other songs. I mean, that is why. I have riffs and ideas that are like six, eight years old. It's like, no, I, I couldn't complete it. It's not done. Something is missing. Uh, so sometimes it takes like forever. Uh, and I, I cannot force it. I, I really cannot force force music. I, I mean, of course, I can technically complete it, but then I will hate it. Uh, if it's not yeah. done, it's not done. Yeah, yeah. So uh, can't half yeah. ass it. No, 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 no. No, then I'd rather not do it at all. Yeah. yeah and, and can. And do you try to leave your lyrics open to interpretation or do you try to engage the listener into what the songs are about? I think it's a bit of both. I mean, uh, usually lyrics have layers, you know. You have the you have the, the top layer, which is the cosmetics, you know. Uh, maybe you have some, some catch lines that are easy to remember, something that is like easy listening to, something that fits. You don't have to hear the whole song to know what it's about. And then you have the whole song, what it's about, and then you have the the, the underlying level uh, layer, which is the the references. Maybe something is a reference to something personal for me, you know. And you have this like underlying le level of uh, th that is basically impenetrable, except for for myself, you know. All right, all right. Can somebody's like own interpretation of some songs like make make you make, look make yourself look at yourself differently as an artist? I'm sorry. Excuse me. Can you repeat? Like, all right <clears throat> can somebody's like own interpretation of of your of your lyrics can make your make yourself look at yourself differently as an artist yeah i guess and, and sometimes people also like come up to me and like say oh, i listen to this song and it they, they have their own interpretation of it and it's like something that i didn't even has nothing to do with mine uh, and that is also those points are when you when you actually realize that everything you listen to and everything you absorb as a as a as a consumer, you know, it's different. Every, everyone has a different perspective. So I can say I can say one thing, and someone else is completely interpreted differently. And it doesn't have to be wrong; it's their interpretation. But it's like for me having this thought. It's an eye opener, you know, to see that people can 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 get something completely different out of it, which is kind of cool in a way. Uh, and that that else that also that also allows me to not think so much about it, you know. I I am hundred percent focused on what I think myself because the rest doesn't matter to me. Everyone else will think something different anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, and then finishing finishing things off, you go back to Graal. You had a flame flame of Hephaestus, which will be released in a few days, like. 
like can you just talk talk to me about like what can we expect from yeah. that uh, comes out in three days uh yeah yeah, yeah. uh actually we we just i just got the finished uh, music video for that so i just approved it so it's it's really really fresh in the making so yeah there will be a video out in a couple of days and the single will, will be out uh, it's a seven inch single we had a uh, the cover art made by our friend uh, roberto todrico from italy and we went like this full-blown 80s judas priest style with the colors and shit uh, and it's also this this upcoming album uh, which is called Likaon. It's going to take off a little bit. Uh, we're not repeating uh, Vasan. We're not repeating ourselves. We're, we're marching forward uh, again. And this, I don't know. For me, this album has a lot of uh, old school heavy metal influences rather than what you're used to from, uh, from Vasan. And it, it doesn't have a lot of keyboards. Everything is as it will be performed live. When, well, it's a different approach. I, I, I'm, I can talk about this forever. I'm just very eager to get this album <laughs> out so everyone else can can hear it too. You know. Yeah, and I'm uh, definitely looking forward to it's it. It's been in the making for a long time, and we we really outdid ourselves, I think. But we'll see what everyone else thinks. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Uh, so, uh, before we go, I just want to thank you for this interview, Theo. And you're like the second member of Dark Funeral to be on that I've interviewed. I'm eventually trying to get everybody on at some point. It's just anything else with the uh, Dark. Dark Funeral or Gra that you like to promote. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the Cannibal Corpse tour tour in, at the end of the year. Yeah, uh, well, for, first of all, I, I <clears throat> I'm sorry for all the <laughs> the weirdness in the timeline because my the old stuff is everything is so everything is so. Uh, I mean, it's over 20 years ago. I don't know which recordings I have left anymore, and everything well, I was like a kid basically. So the timeline is very weird. So uh, I'm sorry if it's kind of incomprehensible, but it's it's the same in here. It's not easy to understand even for myself. Yeah. Uh, but yes, we're we're doing a show with my next gig is in Israel actually with our funeral. I'm going there for the first time, and then we have a couple of other shows, and then we are coming to the US and we do a US and Canada with Cannibal Corpse and Immolation, and it's gonna be fucking massive and brutal as fuck. We're we're eager, really, really eager to do this. So yeah, I'm hoping as many as possible can come out and fucking join us. It'd be epic. Yeah, that's awesome. So everybody, hello, Marta from Dark Funeral and Gra. We'll see you next time. Cheers.